Welcome to the Renaissance and welcome to another response video, Fulani, The Enemy Within, a reply part 3. And of course, this very important notice to you, our dear viewer, that it is never our intention to offend anyone with our videos. It is not also our intention to suggest, insinuate or preach hate towards any group, race, tribe or person. There is also no propaganda or any deliberate attempt to misinform anyone with our videos. The goal of this video is for you to look for the books, journals, magazines or other publications referenced and study them yourself. Remember, let the other exhibit a race of Christian merchants daily trafficking for hecatombs of their fellow creatures in a lot, exhausting Africa to supply with slaves the countries they have depopulated in America, the dying Negro, 1773. And from Kenyo Huntley, a dying slave has within his grasps more freedom than a plantation of living slaves. Recall from parts 1 and 2 of the series Fulanese, the enemies within, we showed that the Fulanese did not sell themselves during the slave trade and we looked at the case of Job Ben Solomon who was redeemed after it was discovered that he was a Fulani and how Negroes differ from the Fulbe or Fulani and cannot come together against the Raiders and how the slave master walks through his slave hunting partners to enslave and subjugate the Negroes till this day, we mean till today, we mean presently and we mean today as in 2020. So we got this comment from one of the slave master's foot soldiers and it says he is not right in what he said but to claim that slavery came with islam and christianity is not true slavery was an integral part of african societies long before the arrival of both religions now remember some of the attributes of their foot soldiers is to defend everything the slave master does or everything he accuses the negroes of you need to bear this in mind he is claiming that slavery was part and parcel of the area before the coming of the slave masters and their religions. But he forgot that the Negroes had no reasons to enslave themselves. They didn't have the wherewithal. They didn't have the resources. There is no way a man living in a hut could have slaves of let's say 10 or 20 or 30. Now if you said each person had a slave, he will have a house and he will also be taking care of them. And remember this was part of slave master's propaganda and he has to propagate it through his foot soldiers. He also claimed that all the women were also slaves which we all know is a lie which we shall ultimately also prove to you. But in this response let us show you some of the reasons this idea that slavery was part and parcel of the region before the coming of the slave masters is a very big lie even though we had previously shown where the inhabitants regretted the coming of the Europeans because they said they brought the slave trade. But let's look at it differently this time. But please remember that one of the ways the slave master uses his foot soldiers is to sell his lies with them. If he says the Negroes are cannibals, his foot soldiers will say yes it's true that's what we do. So while you are thinking that it is all of us together, you won't know that his foot soldiers are not even Negroes, but they use them. That's why their media houses like the BBC or CNN, they know who to interview. So they would rather interview those hermetic or Negroid groups. And because of their lack of humanity and common sense, they will own up to things they claim are being done by us. But you wouldn't know that they are different. That's their agreement. That's part of their deal with the slave master, which you can find out if you read these materials yourself. So let us reference the African slave trade and its remedy by Thomas Fowl Buxton Esquire. And this was published 1840. And there we see that the author writing, I must confess that I apprehend a more stubborn resistance to the diffusion of knowledge especially that which is the best and the most civilizing from the followers of the prophet than from the simple and docile though barbarous tribes of central africa the important thing that to note is simple and docile but he claims they are barbarous mohammedanism 
also gives the sanction of religion to the slave trade and even enjoins it as a mode of converting the heathen that people are kafirin and do not say their prayers the dogs is sufficient reason for the true believers making war upon them and carrying them into slavery their prejudices are so deeply rooted that some missionaries do not hesitate to say they would rather deal with pagans than with Mohammedans. Now remember, what you call Islam today, they used to be called Mohammedans. So they wake up, they make changes to the name and all that. The whole thing is targeted at Negroes. And remember, if they were saying the truth, they would have allowed you to also preach your own side to them. It's usually a monologue. They come in with their own narrative, their lies, and their belief, and impose it on the Negroes. So as this user commented, if slavery was part and parcel of the area before they came, why would the religion be coming with what they had already? If they were genuinely coming for something other than slave trade and slavery which they brought. You may say this does not prove it because of date and timing and sequence of events. But let's just move forward. It will get clearer. Let us reference Barlow's monthly magazine, volume 76, from July to December 1892. And it was published 1892 and there we see up the Benue River. Benue is a big river in what is called Nigeria today. We don't know where it terminates or where it started but our interest is for you to see and understand where it is happening. And it says during the winter of 1889 Major Cloud M. MacDonald made a very interesting journey by steamboat far up the Benue branch of the Niger River. And now that we have a little background of where it is happening, we see further down where it says the country around here was at one time the great cotton market of this part of the Niger Basin. It is now almost uninhabited west. The Mohammedans having desolated it during their slave raids. They have tried to cross the river at this point and carry their raids into the Basa country, but the people supported by the Niger company and with the wide river before them have effectually held the Mohammedans in check. So do you still have doubts that it was the Mohammedans? Because if it wasn't, the place would have been desolated before the Mohammedans came. So you see that it was them. But when they changed their name or their identity, you will think there is anything different. It's the same group. They just need to change their name. They say it's now Islam, but they're still doing, them doing it. They did it back then. They are still doing it till today until tomorrow morning. And going further, it tells us that at Loco, McDonald met one of the much talked of Fube Emirs. Now remember, Fube is Fulani. If you go to Nigeria, in fact, the West African sub-region, including Cameroon today, you will see that it's still the same Fulanis that are the Emirs. They rule everywhere. They are the president of Nigeria. They own the Fulani headsmen. And from the statement and the way it's written, you see that it says, met one of the much talked of Fobe Emirs. That means they have been much talked of. And the only reason they could have been talked about this way is either because of their slave raiding escapades. Remember, the statement is the much talked of. There is no other thing they could have been talked about at that time. But if you still are in doubt let's just move forward and here is what the emir had to say when he came to meet with the queen's envoy and he said he and his people were not tillers of the soil they did not dig the ground neither did they batter ivory or palm oil like the merchants from kanu and the north and like the white men no they were fighting people they fought the pagans and made slaves of them he had to send a tribute of 200 slaves to his master, the Sultan of Sokoto, and he had great difficulty in getting them. So our interest here is for you to see what he said about his people. And above all, that they fought the pagans and made slaves of them. Do you need anything further to show you that they brought the slave trade, both religions? And going further, it says, now as MacDonald was all powerful, could he not by authority of his queen, make the white traders sell him rifles and cartridges so that he might raid the tribes on the other side of the river and thus get what he wanted. Of course, this would be used only against the pagans and not against the white men. Now remember, the Negroes were supposedly the main pagans, whereas they were the true worshippers of the Most High. 
sometimes you hear the so-called Hebrew Israelites claiming that they were the chosen people without knowing that they have been given the golden calf. So today they are running after the slave master's deities, not what their forefathers communed with because prayer is for a slave. It's only a slave that you teach how to talk to your father. If you notice, those religions make slaves of the Negroes because they don't go to the almighty creator of heaven and earth who their forefathers called or at least directly. But instead, you notice that they have to latch on to either what the slave hunters of the Arabs or the Europeans gave them as a golden calf, which they think is the real thing. Even when it doesn't work, it does not protect them and it does not give them anything that you can point at to say this is what they have derived or they have gained from their loyalty to the slave master's deities. Let us also reference objections to the abolition of the slave trade with answers to which are prefixed and this was by Reverend James Ramsey and it was published 1788 and there we see something that should give us an idea of why their concept of they being slaves in Africa before the coming of these religions is a lie. And here it tells us that part of the objections they had at that time as to why the slave trade should not be stopped was that the slaves were the children of women kept for breeding slaves. Now remember, they brought a lot of lies to justify their actions which is what they did to today. If you notice how this person is telling us that slave trade was part and parcel of the area before the coming of these religions. He is just doing it to defend the religions, not that he is being realistic or he researched it. So now you see what they are telling us here that part of why they shouldn't stop the slave trade at that time, these are the objections, was that there were some women kept specifically to produce slaves. Now if you note the gestation period of man based on the Gregorian calendar, we'll say it's nine months, that's like a year. Now after that whole year, it takes a few months at least to assume but without conceding that they are saying the truth for the baby to start working. We give it another year. So please, we want you to consider how long it takes before the baby can be old enough to be sold as a slave. That's one side. And again, remember at that time, there is no type of lie they didn't tell against the Negroes. The same way they are doing till today. And because the Negroes lack any idea of racial affinity, they don't know who is their brother. And that's why they don't understand. Their foot soldiers are used to claim that those lies are true. So if they say, do you sacrifice humans, their foot soldiers will say, yes, we do. So you will be thinking you are the same with them. You won't know that they discussed it at the background, behind the scenes, and came out to tell you that because the Negroes will think they are the same with the others. And the author of this book replied to say, then they would be sold when children, but the slave cargoes consist of all ages of both sexes which have been kidnapped or enslaved in wars made on purpose to accommodate the dealers in this horrid traffic. At least this should show us that there is no way the people would have been slaves already before being captured because if they were slaves already before you capture them, it wouldn't make sense. Who were they slaves to? Because if you were a slave already, it is the owner that will be selling them to them. But they were not, even though if you looked at it technically from a Fulani point of view or an Arab point of view, today they will say we are all Africans. But it is those Arabs, the Babas, the Tuaregs that do the capturing. So the slave master can use it as his alibi to say, oh, they were already slaves to these other people before they sold them to us. So when we looked at the objection 76, based on the numbers, it says Britain produces annually 2,000 culprits. Now remember, they claimed that these were prisoners of war at that time. Remember, they had to also lie to those that had conscience, the humans among them. If you checked today, those who own the weapons manufacturing companies are behind the wars in Africa. They are behind the stealing of the resources. They still use the same food soldiers, which we are going to show you shortly. But our interest is to show you that there is no way the slave trade could have been part and parcel of the place when they were the same people that told us that the Negroes were naked, living on trees. They had no languages. They were catching them from the trees and the bush and then trying to make them humans. And they were like beasts of burden, so to say. So you need to understand that they told a lot of lies, which you can easily understudy and understand by looking for these materials and studying them yourself. All you need to do is try to look at what the feelings, 
were like at that time. What did the Negroes say? What did the victims say? They wrote books you can read to understand. It doesn't matter if one clown comes to tell you that they are aborigine. Don't listen to them. Read the materials yourself. That's all you need to do. And going further, it says the Negro countries are 40 times as large. They therefore may supply annually 80,000 culprits. Remember, I had to explain the number. The numbers were too many. They were too large to have been considered victims of just war. So they found some other ways to lie to their people. The same way they're lying today. If you notice how sort of the slave master is, when he came with Professor Gates and his 388,000 slaves from Africa, that was when he was planning to come up with this aboriginal narrative. You see how he works. When he started it, you wouldn't know where he's going. You will just be looking at what he's saying. Then he will arrive. So if you want to debunk Professor Gates and his lies, all you need to ask him is, show us where you got these figures from since you were not born by then you see him running back and forth because he knows he's lying anyway slave master understands that you will believe him before even what you read especially as a negro because the negro believes what he is told it doesn't matter what the records say it doesn't matter what his experiences are he will believe what he is told more than any other thing and the slave master understands that he doesn't trust him so all he needs to do is to look for a negro condition him to help him propagate his lies to the negroes but going further you see what the response to the 76 objection was and it says supposes africa equally civilized with britain for crimes are the offspring of civilization crimes exist not among savages there must be laws and police to which they are to be referred this therefore if true cuts off another assertion that the Africans are brutish, for among savages there can be no culprits. Society must be well advanced before a man can be considered as a criminal and an object of justice. But how does our method of collecting slaves on the coast agree with this notion? Our traders should demand a certificate of the slave's sentence lest he take away an innocent person. The fact is, among imported slaves, there exists no appearance of culprits. Some are young girls, not grown up, many boys under 14 years. They generally affirm themselves to have been kidnapped. If criminals, some of their old practices would now and then break out. But they are quiet, inoffensive people, guilty only of brooding over their unhappy state or of stealing from a niggardly master to keep themselves from dying of hunger. So our interest is for you to see this account. Now remember, what the slave master normally would do, go and bring some of these hermetic negroid groups because of their lack of common sense and humanity. They will come and say, we did it. Some of them will own up to doing it. The police in Nigeria still does it till today. They can go and catch somebody and they choreograph a crime. That's to help him on his target. Let's say if the target is the southeast or south-south, he will catch somebody from there to show that the police is working. Remember, the military, the army, the police, they were all instruments of the slave trade. We don't want to go into that for now. We shall prove it to you. But at least you see from what this man is writing, it tells you that the Negroes at that time did not have police or army. So how could they have enslaved others without that? You need that to be able to enforce slavery on anybody. Let us also remember that the Negroes were not considered human at that time and both religions considered them something subhuman and that they were bringing their religions to civilize them. We need to bear this in mind. So let us then reference Cardinal Lavigiri and the African slave trade and it was edited by Richard F. Clark and published 1889. There we see, but I cannot resist saying today that of the errors so fatal to Africa, the saddest is that which teaches with Islam that humanity is made up of two distinct races one that of the livers destined to command the other that of the cursed as they styled them destined to serve now in the letter they consider the negroes to constitute the lowest grade namely that on a par with cattle so if they were the same people will you consider your brother on a par with cattle if that makes sense to you 
please put it in the comment section. And to better understand it, remember that the so-called African Americans are being told that Islam is a religion for Africans and for black people and how it was the Christians that sold them without telling them that it was actually the Muslims that did the capturing and of course sold to the Christians. They still work together till tomorrow morning which we shall prove to you at least if you want to understand it further. Look at Biafra, look at Ambazonia. And going further it says the Negro in their estimation is as Leo the 13th possibly says a beast destined for the yoke. So what more do you need to understand that it was these religions that brought it. There is no way one religion that was your original way of life or religion if we assume that the negro way of life was akin to religion because religion is actually an attempt by man to enslave man or at best colonize man and we remember that all their accusations against the negroes were human sacrifices which we have proven to be a lie going further it says having reached by their conquests the heart of a continent peopled by negroes the Muslims have therefore betaken themselves to the work which is justified by their doctrines. So now they will rather try to tell you that this is propaganda or anything. One simple way to see the reality yourself is to look at the fact that things like Fulani Hatsmen, Boko Haram, they are using weapons made by the Christians and Jews because they can manufacture those things themselves and they are killing other people. So if they were not working together, why do you think the BBC, the VOA and Al Jazeera do not report those things? Why do you think the same way the Nigerian media banned the media from reporting the killings? It's the same way the BBC, VOA and uh, CNN and all those Western media are doing the same. Why do you think they are doing it if they were not still working together? You see further that their doctrines justify their actions and it says the Muslims have therefore betaken themselves to the work which is justified by their doctrines. By degrees, slave trading bands formed by them have advanced into the interior, coming from Morocco, from the country of the Tuaregs, from Tunis towards Timbuktu and the countries which surround the Niger, from Egypt and Zanzibar towards the region of the lakes and even beyond the upper Congo and almost to the frontiers of the British possessions and of the Cape colonies. Everywhere they prosecute the same impious hunts which feed their commerce. So what more do you need to know that that's what those things are for? Remember the Negroes are a unique group. So wherever they go, wherever they find them, they capture them. If you doubt what we're saying, you might be looking at things like Boko Haram Fulani Hetzman in Nigeria. That's exactly how they were doing it. If you notice, the army, which was a slave hunting militia, does not fight the Hetzman, does not fight Boko Haram technically, but it's busy fighting where they think the Negroes are. That should tell you what they could have done by then. You don't need a fortune teller to decipher this. So you see that while they pretend in the north to be against Boko Haram, they go to the National Assembly and talk about going to train them abroad, those that they claim repent. And now rem remember, the repentance is based on their themes. So they can gather any number of people and tell you tomorrow that these people have repented. If you doubt what we're saying, they say they are releasing repented Boko Haram. If you are a so-called African-American that is following any of the things going on there, go and ask them to give you one of those people for you to train as your own charity and see if they will agree. You will see they won't agree. But if you make the mistake of going there physically to ask for it, they might kill you so that you don't think it's a simple thing to work with these people. Our interest is for those that keep shining we are Africans, we are all blacks, to understand that their food soldiers are most dangerous in the project and they are being used by the slave masters. You can also see from this comment from either somebody in sub-Saharan Africa or one of their foot soldiers but we want you to understudy and understand how the misinformation works. His question was were bodies shown during the Fulani attack or just coffins? So in his mind he is thinking that maybe people just brought coffins to deceive everybody. Because that's what they will do. They might, if you show them this video, all they will tell you is propaganda. Now, if you make up your mind to say, let me follow through what and what could be going on there. If they do one of those, their actions or activities, like the killings in Kaduna a few days ago, yesterday or thereabout, 
they will also tell you that it's a propaganda. If you ask them, is it propaganda that you didn't kill? They will tell you that, how do you know it was us that did it? That's who they are. It doesn't change. They enjoy it. It's just what they love doing. The slave master discovered this. But unfortunately, the Negroes do not know who their brothers are. So they think we are all black people or we are all Africans. A little way to look at it is to ask yourself, when they said South African xenophobic attack, you probably may have heard some of the so-called African Americans telling you that it was impossible that people were considered Judah or whatever to have been captured when they all were black people. But they can't look at what is happening now because of the misinformation too. Because if you looked at how the Fulanese are desolating communities today, it would be very easy to see how they did it back then. They just used the federal might use the misinformation the slave master is already hiding behind them he knows that's who they are he is the one doing their conquests for them they have been doing it it's not new all you need to do is to read these old materials and you will understand what could have transpired back then you just have to understand who they are we are not the same people they also know we are not the same but many people do not know remember the negro does not listen to warnings no matter what you tell him, that's why you see it coded in the Bible that when the flood was to come, people were informed, but they laughed at Noah. That's part of the code there, if you want to understand it very well. No matter what you tell them, if you notice, the Negroes will see one community raided by the Fulani today. They are the next community, but if you go and tell them, they'll be looking at you as if you are talking garbage. If you were to follow the agitation for Biafra, follow the agitation for Amazonia, you will see the same thing. They will be defending the slave masters. They will be defending the killings. Even though it will get to their turn, but that's who they are, which we shall show you in a subsequent video. But our interest is for you to see how these things happened at that time. And you see again from one of their foot soldiers how they reason and how the slave master uses them. Remember, Part of the reasons they do is to claim that we are all the same. Now ask yourself, if you were all the same, in, let's say in a place like Nigeria, in Biafra and Ambazonia, how come mentioning Biafra, mentioning Ambazonia, talking of self-determination, attracts killing by people who claim to be your brothers? That's one little question you must ask. This is mentioning at all. So what they are doing today is to make sure they don't talk about it. In Nigeria, you can't mention Biafra as a word which is their agreement with the slave master you can mention it in the slave master's place remember the slave master doesn't want to be seen as foolish but he wants the negro to be seen as foolish but he can only do it through his brainless foot soldiers you need to ask yourself this basic question remember if the so-called african americans for example had any sense of racial affinity understood that the negroes were different from the blacks and the africans and all the groups that are there one thing they would have done very perfectly would be if the slave master and his foot soldiers, be it in Biafra and Ambazonia and in Nigeria and in Cameroon, connive not to report on Biafra, be it the CNN, Al Jazeera, VOA, Deutsche Welle and all of them, the Negroes that own media will be reporting on it, make information, research about it. But instead, they will take sides with the slave masters. You will hear some of them say, oh no, we prefer a united Nigeria without knowing that those people the slave master wants you to stay with were the slave hunters of old. So here you see from one of the foot soldiers, the same person that said the slavery was part and parcel of the area before the religions came. Now permit us to ask him, if the Muslims were capturing the Negroes to be used in their harems, and to be used as soldiers and the Europeans were doing the same to be used as soldiers and to be used in their plantations can he tell us what the Negroes were using their own slaves for remember there is no way the Negro could have enslaved themselves it's impossible one simple way to look at it is if a child is turns 10 or 11 for example let's say there are no schools what does he do does he just stay at home every day not doing anything how do they feed but what happened was that the Negroes were in a near paradise which the rest of the world did not quite understand and did not like. And the Negro spirituality was amazing 
which is subject of a different video anyway but our interest is for you to see how the foot soldiers reason so you see the same person is telling us here that have you ever considered the fact that the first leader of the nigerian slave army was iran C? was he not an Igbo? so you see how they reason now let's show you how faulty this is so that's how they will go tell the slave master the slave master knows their understanding is not in depth their understanding is not correct but he will leverage on it so when you talk he will say yes you people did it you see you people agreed you did it so he will go and bring them to come and say yes they did it so let's show you how faulty this his view that Hironsi was the first leader of the Nigerian slave army so here is the man he is talking about he was born in 1924 so he claimed he was the first or head of the army which we know is a lie but again when they say it if you are not an insider if you cannot research you won't understand where they are going they do it deliberately the slave master knows that's how they reason anyway but we're going to show you what he was doing so now somebody that was born in 1924 murdered in 1966 he claims he was the head of the army but let's show you the army he claims he was the first head of when it was created so here you see the nigerian army turned 150 years in 2013 which you tell us that it was established in 1863 remember it was established from the slave hunting militia when they lost the american market after the emancipation proclamation of 1863 so they lost that market which was a big chunk of where they made their profits from so they couldn't export slaves anymore so of course they rebranded the slave hunting militia to what they called army that's how they came about the nigerian army otherwise the negroes had nothing like police or army and they were crime free we shall look at that in a subsequent video but our interest is for you to see how they work so now how can a man who was born in 1924 be the first head of an army that was established in 1863 so you see how their brains work so the slave master uses them to propagate his lies knowing that they won't be able to catch his lies if you notice how he came about with professor gates and 388,000. And you see videos of Professor Gates looking at things like documents. The, their interest here is to make it look like the slaves walked up, went into a slave ship and found themselves in the plantations. They don't want to even tell you the fact that the people fought. Many committed suicide. Many died at that time. All these issues you are looking at today were coming from there. And that's what they are still doing till tomorrow morning. That's why the army does not go to fight full and headsmen. It does not fight Boko Haram technically. It just uses them to kill innocent Negroes. That's what they are doing, which we shall show you, prove it to you. We don't need you to believe us. We just need to show you where it is written and then you can take it from there. So normally, one of the things they do very well is if there is a story about, let's say, an individual who fought against the slave trade or something, in order to cover that path, they will either attribute him to another achievement different from the one he knows if you notice the aboriginal one of is like then kind you notice that he is denying things like nathona even harry Tubman. he will ultimately deny everything that is heroic about negroes that's how it operates the slave master is a subtle beast so that's why he is doing it if you were to ask even if he claimed he was aborigine if he wasn't being teleguided and remote controlled by the slave masters he would have limited his narrative to slavery and allowed it to be that okay they were enslaved in their own land we can say okay that's genuinely ignorant of him but that's what he wants to achieve but you notice how he's denying all the things that are heroic about negroes so let us quickly reference through unknown nigeria by john r raffel and this was published in 1907 and there it tells us about a man called frederick lugard and our interest in Lugard was how he fought against the slave trade. Now remember, in order to cover that path, they now claimed that Lugard was the one who created Nigeria. So if you ask anybody, be it Biafrans or any Nigerian at all, they will tell you that Nigeria was created by Lugard, whereas it wasn't him. But in order to take away that path, the fact that he fought the slave hunters, they now attributed the creation of Nigeria to him. 
Our interest is to show you their game. Their game is very simple. All you need to do is to read the historical document. So from here, we see who they claim was the founder of Nigeria. And you see that it is the right Honorable Sir George Tubman Goldie, founder of Nigeria. But if you doubt what we're saying, if you know any Nigerian that holds a PhD in whatever thing, including history, he is going to tell you that it was founded by Frederick Lugard. Now, if he doesn't tell you that, he will tell you, oh no, it was amalgamated. But Nigeria existed before Lugard even came to the area in the first place. But that's by the way. Our interest is to show you how they deal with anyone that either worked for the Negroes. You notice how in the US, for example, they have succeeded in selling to the Negroes there too, that Lincoln did not emancipate anybody. Yeah, you see what it says about Lugard. This is not our main interest. But he tells us about a few brief words on the government of the Hausa provinces. Remember, the Europeans went to the north first, knowing that that was the root of the slave trade. They wanted to stop it at that time. So we want you to follow closely what he says about Frederick Lugard here. And he says, as stated in chapter 4, we rule by and through the natives, leaving to them the selection who shall be their kings, known as emirs subject to the approval of the governor of the protectorate although a protectorate has been declared for a considerable period previous to that assumption of power by the crown a large part of the country was occupied only in name the endeavor of sir frederick lugard the first governor was to bring those areas under influence without the use of troops if possible no civilian could be more a man of peace than this ex-soldier. Now remember, one of the things Luga did was he forced or imposed it on the Sultan to stop the slave raids. The same way you see the Fulani headsmen and Boko Haram killing people today, it's all been engineered by the Sultan of the Fulani called Sultan of Sokoto. So imagine if a European went to him to stop it. That was what Luga did. But instead of talking about that portion, they now said Lugard created Nigeria so as to divert everyone's attention from the real and actual thing that Lugard did. His wife recorded it. His uh, book also contains the same thing. Other accounts recorded it. But they chose to leave that part because they don't want the Negroes to even know who was behind their hunt, raid and capture. So you see how their game flows. So you see some of the things that Lugard did at that time. Wherever an emir no matter what his former record promised to rule his people fairly justly and not to war upon or raid tribes for slaves or other plunder he was confirmed in his position and promised the moral and if necessary the material support of the suzerain power so this was what lugard was doing at that time so you understand why they chose to avoid that part totally so where emirs persistently and definitely continued evil practices, they were deposed. When that had to be done, Sir Frederick moved rapidly. He was up and down and across the country at remarkable speed and with marvelous energy, trekking all the time and covering wonderful distances in the hottest periods of the year, playing the path of the famous Earl of Warwick on making and making kings as he went along. Whenever the ruler had to be dethroned, Sir Frederick called on the chiefs of the people to select and elect the successor, whom he then ceremoniously installed, he representing the great white king beyond the seas. Of the several thus put on thrones, I do not think a single one has had to be removed. So our interest is for you to see one of the good things or great things that Lugard did, which they wanted to run away from. That's why they now claim that Lugard created Nigeria when it was Goldie, not Lugard. So today, when people are cursing, they will be cursing Lugard, whereas it was Goldie. But then, the slave master understands his game. In order to prevent people from knowing the achievements of Lugard, he gave him that one, which he knows the people may not like. Let us also reference the story of Africa and its explorers by Robert Brown, PhD, Volume 1. The Guinea Traders, The Cossians of Africa, The Tale of Timbuktu, The Niger, and this is a special edition and it was published in 1907. And there 
we are shown that Fullers were a warlike people capable of placing 16,000 men in the field and prone to hostilities against their neighbors. Since they could not obtain European goods without slaves, nor slaves without making war. However, only the young and strong were taken, the old and feeble to avoid trouble had their throats cut, but they excused themselves for this barbarity by declaring that the people whom they thus raided, robbed and murdered never prayed to God, and that as the European factories would sell guns, powder and cloth for no other articles except black men and women, the people whom the travelers tried to persuade into more peaceful pursuits had no alternative. Moreover, did not the book, the Quran, enjoin on the faithful to make war against the infidel? So our interest is for you to see how the slave master does it. He uses them. You see how he tells them, if you want these goods, you have to catch these slaves. It's a very simple thing. The same technique they use till today. So if you watch in Nigeria, the slave master gives them the weapons and then does the propaganda and the lies for them using them too. So in all cases, the slave master remains clean while they are easily used to see everyone else as foolish. So if you were to ask an average African-American today, he's going to say, oh no, it's uh, Africans or black people killing themselves without knowing that it is the same people that captured and sold the slaves that are doing it with the slave masters. So that's the thing. We are not asking you to believe us. All we need you to do is monitor what is happening there. So if you were to open a company, for example, to make cars, the slave master will get them to close your company because he doesn't want you to be able to produce those goods he uses to entice them. You can see what they are doing in a place like Nigeria today. Like we told you, believe it or not, the foot soldiers, they lack humanity. They lack common sense. There is no better way to say it. All you need to do is to identify who and who were Negroes. And you will see their activities today. We we'll prove it to you beyond any reasonable doubts that they lack humanity and common sense. Also, let us reference Modern Geography Volume 2 by Pinkerton John. And this was published 1802. And there we are shown that these fullers, it is said, can bring into the field not less than 16,000 cavalry and being surrounded by 24 pagan nations or tribes, these Mohammedans never hesitate to make war for the sake of procuring slaves. To the west of these fullers in the E is the English settlement of Sierra Leone formed in 1787 for the benevolent purpose of promoting African civilization. And you notice there is an asterisk on the civilization on top and the footnote says this benign colony has been recently attacked by the savages, a proof that conquest alone can civilize Africa. By the treaty of 1783, the river of Senegal and its dependencies were left in the possession of the French who had extended their factories about 500 miles from the shore. But our interest is for you to see how they play their game. Now remember, they brought some freed Negroes back to a place where people were already living. Now instead of either sending them back to where they were supposed to be from, they knew where anyway, but at least they may have been destroyed, they now sent them to Sierra Leone. And one thing you have to remember is that at that time, the people were seeing any body coming from elsewhere as an invader, possible somebody coming to spy them out for slave hunting. So they will attack them normally. But if you hear the so-called African Americans today, of course they listen to the slave master. They'll say, oh no, when the people were brought back, the people there did not accept them. Now look at it from their so-called year of return to Ghana. Ghana is not where the slaves were from. Ghana is where the slave forts were built by the slave masters. They captured the slaves from all over the region and shipped them to the factories, which was, or barracoons, which was what they called their storage facilities at that time for the slave raids or the, for the slaves. So today they are now sending them all back to Ghana. Tomorrow or next, when those people start expanding or coming with some things they could have brought from the new world, so to say, is going to create conflict between them and the people that are already there. And because they are not really the same people, it's going to be tough. We want you to take a little time and ask yourself, 
why does the slave master not talk about Biafra and Ambazonia that shipped the bulk of the slaves? He doesn't even mention it. But he's telling you about going back to Ghana, whereas he's still working with his old soldiers. All you need to understand how these things work is look at the Nigerian army. Tell us why if your constitution is in Nigeria says those that kill should be tried and all that, why do they not try Fulani Hussman? Why do they not try Boko Haram? That should tell you right there what they are doing. You just need to identify who and who were Negroes. That's all you need to do. The appellations Igbo, Yoruba, Efik, Ibibio we are all coined by the slave masters. If you doubt what we're saying, some of the things you can look at is the fact that all the names you bear were given to you by the slave masters. If you doubt this any further, if you know anyone from a place called Mbise, ask him or her who gave them that name. He's going to tell you no. We got the name from this, we got the name from that, we got it from Ayar of Ise, we got it from this or got it from that. But the name was given to them by the Fulanese, but they don't know. We want you to give this a try. Now we ask you, do you believe that the same people capturing the Negroes and selling them as slaves are the same with them? Do you believe that? If you believe that, please put it in the comment section. Remember, today is a different thing entirely. The Negroes are human. At that time, they were able to deceive the whole world that the Negroes were beasts, they were animals, they cut them on trees and then they polished them to make them human and teach them some language. That's how they destroyed the languages. So you don't think that the aboriginal one of these have anything to say. They were engineered by the slave masters. So don't even look at what they are saying. They know they are lying, but the slave master is the one hiding behind them. So our interest is to ask you, do you still believe that the same people could have been capturing themselves? So if you believe they were all the same, why do they not sell their own people? At least we know that the Fulanese do not kill or sell their own people. If they were the same with the Negroes, why do they not do the same to all everybody? And they are the ones selling everybody, killing everybody. Then, are you then saying the same mass killings going on today are the same people killing themselves? So let's look at the Trevor Martin example. Now please don't misconstrue this as in any way denigrating the memory of the innocent boy. Our interest is to show you how different we are and how the slave master hiding behind his brainless foot soldiers is unleashing mayhem in the area. So that you can understand before you say oh we are all Africans, you say it with caution, you say it with humanity so that you understand that there is no way the same people can be doing this to themselves, it's impossible. So, and to those who may not know, Trevor Martins is a little un unarmed little boy who was killed by someone else and there were demonstrations all over the country at that time to commemorate him. So we want to use him to show you that there is no way you can say we are the same back in Africa. This is a very simple way to demonstrate it. So we see that this one boy attracted demonstrations all over what is called the United States. People sympathized for the boy and all that and his death. So now what these people are trying to tell us is that the mass burial of 70 something people in our own place, this was in Nigeria in the middle belt, massacred by this same Fulanese. They are now telling us that we are so inhuman that when such a thing happened, we couldn't demonstrate. Remember, if you came out to demonstrate, these same people will kill you. The slave master will not report it. So they can report about Trevor Martins. The message they are sending to you is for you to see if we did not capture you and sell your forefathers to come to this our place that is like heaven to you. This is where you would have been and even if you were killed there, nobody will talk about you. So on the surface, you will think, oh yeah, that's true. That's why you see some people telling you that they thank God for slavery. Apart from the religion, which is the opium they are using, they think that this is hell and this is heaven. But the challenge and one thing you have to bear in mind is that we are all human. We hate these killings. The people demonstrate. These are bishops demonstrating against the killings. But the slave master's media will not tell you about them because he works with his foot soldiers. Remember, his foot soldiers cannot make anything called weapon. But then he knows that they are brainless. They lack humanity. So he gives them the weapons. But the only way to get them to use the weapons is to also incite them and protect them with his propaganda. So that's what the BBC, CNN and Al Jazeera are for. 
they are never for the negroes so it's unfortunate that the negro will be running after either islam or christianity or judaism because those things are just the golden calf if you check those that even own those religions do not practice what the religions preach so you see how they use their brainless food treasures to hit the negroes with the golden calf and at the same time murder them in their numbers if you doubt us let's follow what is happening there so if you have seen the photos of mass burial for the 75 victims of fulani hatsman attack and you still somehow feel that that's too long ago because it was 2018 or thereabouts this is something that happened in january 31st 2020 20 plus two hatsman victims get mass burial now remember they used to be called fulani hatsman they used the power their political power and might in alliance with the slave master to change it to hatsman so as to remove the fulani there so you see how smart and subtle they are so they say hatsman in fact when they knew that it was them that were still hatsman they now change it to bandits remember bandits is not our language there is no negro language that says it's bandits they choose what they want you to report so you see when the slave master conforms he doesn't conform because he is being human he conforms because he knows the games they are playing together this is not something we want you to believe us we want you to look at it yourself you will see their game it's very simple to see now you are telling us that you in the americas could demonstrate about one boy a little boy innocently murdered by some wicked dude and then we don't complain when 20 of us are murdered there if you think we are all just that stupid then you have not looked at history the reason is if you come out to demonstrate the slave hunters will massacre you the slave master will not report it that's why they control the media you may also notice that the slave master concocts lies for them because like we told you believe it or not they lack humanity they lack common sense so the slave master will look for a lie to tell on their behalf but then he will tell it in such a way that even if you decode it it will make him look stupid it will only make his food soldiers look stupid but because of their lack of humanity and common sense they won't even know when they are being made to look stupid that's the thing so here he tells us that nigeria's conflict is a result of environmental devastation across west africa that's what the slave master is telling us now if you check it very well this shows you that whoever is behind the crisis lacks common sense because the only thing they would have needed is simple irrigation that's as simple as can be but because the slave master is using them to subjugate and enslave the negroes he chooses this lie to tell so you see a little of this article it says nigeria is experiencing a major conflict between nomadic herdsmen and indigenous farmers in 2016 the conflict led to the death of 2500 people displaced 62000 others and led to the loss of 13.7 billion in revenue in january 2018 alone the conflict claimed the lives of 168 people our interest is to ask you you think we are all that stupid that we don't care about human life that we don't demonstrate the same way you demonstrated over trevor martins when they do these killings we do but the problem is the slave masters food soldiers they are brutal they are murderers the nigerian army like we told you remember you can't come and kill an american the army will probably protect them or protect you or protect anyone in those countries but the reverse is the case because the army was a slave hunting militia of the fulani so they understand how to use it against anybody so if you were to do things they don't like they will send the army against you but the fulani herdsmen can go and kill massacre a community the army will protect them but the slave master won't tell you that the slave master won't even report that it's full any herdsmen he will tell you herdsmen or bandits so on the surface you'll be thinking oh these people are so foolish that's how they sold us you won't know that it is still their slave hunting partners doing the same thing they have been doing so things like the bbc the biggest propaganda media outfit on earth they will go in reporting the local language and tell you all the lies because they understand that the negro listens to what he is being told but we all know they are liars many people know the bbc is a fraudulent media outfit but what can we do the same way you are helpless wherever you are that's how we are 
it's not like we're all stupid it's just that the slave masters foot soldiers they lack humanity they lack common sense and you can see how the sultan himself put the same thing we are telling you so that you don't think there's anything we are telling you you can't verify he says north that is northern nigeria that's the home of the fulani jihadists those are the people killing people all over the place he says north has everything except sense sultan abubakar so this is one thing the slave master knows about them and he uses them effectively for that purpose so that's why you see that there is nothing you can do there that the place can make progress we reference again a history of the colonization of africa by alien races and it was by sahari h johnston and it was published 1899 and there again we see the attributes of the negro that makes him a perfect slave our interest is for you to look out for these attributes in both the so-called african americans the so-called negroes in europe in asia and of course in sub-saharan africa where they are you will see that they all behave alike they can never come together you will just see it it's very simple to see and first we see that the negroid is the link between the hamite and the negro resulting from intermarriage while the negro is the west african pure and simple whose blood has remained unadulterated by the foreigner this classification is at first sight clear enough but an element of confusion appears when we find negroes described as sons of ham remember negroes are not hamites and mohammedans in general spoken of as arabs practically we have only to deal with hamites negroes and a cross between the two the first and last holy mohammedan the negro in the main pagan though where he has been conquered Mohammedan. So you see how they are trying to use the Hamites or the Arabs or whoever they can today to make the Negroes Muslims. Because where they conquered the Negroes at that time, from paganism they called it. But that's the true worship of the Most High, which we shall show you. It's not even worship. It's commune. It's never prayer. You don't have to go pray to your father. Your father equips you with everything you needed to go back to school with. Do you have to keep begging him for something he had already given you? The answer would be no. So we'll show you how the slave master came with the idea of prayer. So you see people in churches or mosques today, every week and all that. We will explain to you. You will see where these are documented too. And you will also see where the acts and actions of the Most High are manifest in reality in the Negro society. Whereas the slave master cannot do that. Going further, you see where it says, As to languages, the Hamites of this part of Africa have only two. Fula and Tibo. So you see the Fulas are Hamites. And then the Negroids too, Hausa and Kanuri. While the Negroes speak a diversity of distinct languages and innumerable dialects. So at least you see that the Negroes are different and a cross between the Negroes and Hamites produced the Negroids or so to say. But our interest is for you to see the same thing we tell you about the Negroes in the New World and all that. The slave master knew who the Negroes were. They are very peaceful. If you took any of those other people, they will kill you. That's just it. That's the only reason. The Negroes are very peaceful. But the slave master's propaganda machinery, leveraging on his foot soldiers and their lack of humanity and common sense, made it look like the Negroes are barbaric. So when you see the massacres done by the Fulanis today, you will think it's the same people killing themselves. That's why he keeps saying African, African, which we all know is a lie. And we see that the Negro has no idea of racial affinity. He will equally align himself to the white or to the yellow races in order to subdue his fellow black or to regain his freedom from the domination of another Negro tribe. So you see the thing. That's why you see in the US or anywhere the Negroes are, you can easily go in there and get a negro to be used against his brother that's normal so those are the things the slave master gives to his foot soldiers so when you see the fulani prepare or rig elections and they get one sibling to be used against his sibling that's his game it doesn't change and there is nothing you will say that will make those negroes believe you because all they need is to make the economic environment very harsh so a little portion of stew 
will make them sell their bad rights. That's why you see the Fulanis, they close businesses, do all sorts of things to make sure that businesses do not thrive there. That's their game. It doesn't change. Which we shall show you. You can call it conspiracy. You can call it whatever you like. But at least you saw it recorded why they were doing the slave trade. So you can still see it today. The same thing they do. That's how the slave master steals the resources from there. Without them, he can't steal the resources and destroy the environment the way he is doing. Without them, there is no way anybody will be going to war to fight for one Nigeria. For example, if you were to go kill your brother for one Nigeria or one Cameroon, if they asked you what sense does he make, you can't justify it. It's only his foot soldiers, the same way they were capturing the slaves, that's the same way he uses them till tomorrow morning. And in this video, you'll see like Omar Johnson talking about going to places like Nigeria or Ghana or something and talking to them. But he doesn't seem to ask himself, how come these same people you want to talk to are the people killing their own people? Not talking about it, the same way the slave master is not talking about it. And he can still see that there must be some form of synergy, some sign of connection, some form of relationship between the murderers and the slave masters. Because they are all acting and behaving alike. He can't see that. If he goes to tell them that, they will even kill him because they know he's Negro. They know their forefathers sold them. They know who they are. But the Negroes do not know who they themselves are or who their siblings are. So if you notice, the so-called African Americans, probably most of them know nothing about Biafra. If you remember, somebody like Steve Jobs left Christianity and Islam because of what these two people did to Biafrans during the war. They are still doing the same thing till today. Yet, the so-called Negroes cannot see. They are still running after the slave master's golden calves without looking inwards to find out what could be going on. At least something that you're doing that is not working. There is nothing anywhere that anybody can show you as what the Negroes has benefited from running after the slave master's deities. But they still run after it anyway, which is most unfortunate. But then here is where you know some of the attributes of the Negroes are correct and the slave master is spot on in his assessment. And he says that the Negro more than any other human type has been marked out by his mental and physical characteristics as the servant of other races. That's all you need to see from here that they know who the Negroes are. Now ask yourself if the Fulanese were the same with those that they are murdering, let's say with the Ibos, for example, that means they accept this proposition here. They accept this st status. They accept everything that is being said there. The Fulanese work more with the Europeans and Arabs than with the Igbos. They would rather kill the Igbos. That's what they understand them to be for. And that's why the slave master gives them the guns and also protects them after the killings have been done. So that's why you see the killings going on and the medias are not reporting them. Unfortunately, the Negroes in the US they lack any form of racial affinity. They don't understand what is going on, which is most unfortunate though. But then, our interest is further down where he says, but the Negro in general is a bond slave. He gives us a list of those that they could not enslave. That's a polite way of telling you the Negroes are unique. If you think all the black people were the same, one simple question is, are you telling us that those killing others to take over their land are the same with them? If they were the same with them, they would have been in the same house. They would have been in the same land. They would have been co-owners of the land. And there won't be a case of God or Allah giving someone else's land to the other. So it doesn't matter what the slave master says. You just need to apply common sense, which their foot soldiers lack. So going further down, it says, But the Negro in general is a bond slave. He is possessed of great physical strength, docility, cheerfulness of disposition, a short memory for sorrows and cruelties, and an easily aroused gratitude for kindness and just dealing. He does not suffer from homesickness to the overbearing extent that afflicts other people torn from their homes and provided he is well fed, he is easily made happy. So you can see how it's easy to get those aborigine wannabes to start claiming to be aborigines today because they have been fed well. They are now believing that that's their home. So ideally, the Negroes sold to Europe should also take that place as their home. 
those sold to North Africa, the same thing, those sold to the Middle East, the same thing, those sold to the Caribbean, to Brazil, the same thing. You see that the split master is spot on here. But then on the left, you see the map that shows you where and where the slaves were captured from, particular areas. So if you were to look closely, you will see that that part where Biafra and Ambazonia are today is very concentrated as to where they got them from. And then you see all the other places where they got them from. Because remember, it was wherever the Negroes were found. It had nothing to do with being close to the water because those that were taken across the desert were to the Arab world. But like we told you, they work together. Remember, the US is the closest ally of Saudi Arabia and also the closest ally of Israel. So your question should be, how come they are the same, working together? It doesn't matter how many grandstanding or stunts they pull with Iran. If Iran was any different from the slave masters, their own media would have been reporting about things like Biafra and Ambazonia. But you see that they are all together in it. It's a very simple thing to see from what they wrote here. Iran was a very big slave market too. They dealt more with Negro slaves as well. And you also notice that they say above all that he can toil hard under the hot sun and in the unhealthy climate. Now remember, some of the aborigine wannabes are claiming that it was the same that the Negroes with their woolly hair and their better physique and stature are now the same with the Native Americans. Which is unfortunate anyways, but we know that most of those saying it are conditioned by the slave masters. They are paid to say it because the slave master wants to sell that dummy. That's how you see how they operate. If you ask any of them, okay, why and how did you get this information? you see that they have nothing sensible to say. Sometimes they go and bring you an old document that doesn't make sense as they are proof that they are native Indians. Whereas they can see that there is no way the woolly-haired Negro can be the same as the straight-haired Indian. Even the dark people they are sending, those ones do not have woolly hair. So that again debunks their lies. And going further it says, climates of the torrid zone, he has little or no race fellowships. That is to say, he has no sympathy for other Negroes. So you see that thing we're telling you. If Trevor Martins was killed in the United States, they could rally, they could demonstrate, they could do anything. But in Sub-Saharan Africa, if you were to demonstrate, for example, their foot soldiers will kill you. But the slave master will not report them. So you will think it's the same people. For example, they no longer report those killings. That's an agreement between the foot soldiers and the slave masters. That's their game. It doesn't change. So going further, it says he recognizes and follows his master independent of any race affinities. And as he is usually a strong man and a good fighter, he has come into request not only as a laborer but as a soldier. So you see that the Negro physically is endowed, mentally and intellectually is endowed. But unfortunately, he doesn't know how to live above slavery. And that's one thing the slave master leverages on with his foot soldiers. You also see how the Fulani is able to recruit Negroes into their army. So in a place like Nigeria, what they simply do was they send their own brothers to the south that there is no war, peaceful place, and then send the Negroes to the north and of course pitch them against themselves so they get murdered. Now if you doubt what we're saying, they say they are fighting Boko Haram. They are also releasing those that are captured. At the same time, this their claim because some of those that are captured are just young people that they dress and use as propaganda to deceive everybody as if it's not their baby. Now, the same people will not allow you to declare Boko Haram a terrorist group because to them, that's their understanding of life. They understand the terror, bloodshed, violence as a way of life. So you can't tell them that Boko Haram is a terrorist group or full any headsman. Killing you is like they are stuck in trade. You can doubt us, but watch and see what's going on. So they say they now want to rehabilitate them by training them abroad. This might be what the slave master whispered to them because of their lack of humanity and common sense. Because the slave master understands how to reap where he does not sow. So that will give him a lot of forex. So the money they sell or the colored paper he gives them for oil, he can take it back in the name of training their Boko Haram brothers. He is also the one supplying them with weapons. He's also the one telling them who to kill. 
he's also the one doing the propaganda for them so you see that they have nothing good to offer it, they are just being used by the slave masters so further you see what debunks the aborigine narrative one more time and it says when the spanish portuguese and english discovered and settled america they found the native races too small in numbers too fierce or too weakly to be suited for agricultural work and as early as 1503 african slaves were working in the mines of san domingo of mexico and even of Peru, brought thither by the Spaniards and Portuguese. In 1517, the slave trade between Africa and America was regularly established. Charles V of Spain, having granted to a Flemish merchant the exclusive privilege of importing into America 4,000 slaves a year. This monopoly was subsequently sold by the concessionaire to a company of Genoese merchants. So, but today the aborigine wannabe and a clown born yesterday is telling you that the Negroes are aborigines. So, you see the thing. That's why he has to lie. He has to lie about every other thing because that's the only way his lie can be true or look like truth. Also, if you looked at this figure here, it says importing into America 4,000 slaves a year. This is for one company alone. If you were to multiply it by 400 years, that the Indians or the so-called Hebrew Israelites claim was their year of return and all those lies they believe. You see that you have 1.6 million. That in itself debunks Professor Gates and his lie of 388,000 because they want to discount the figures and of course use this aboriginal narrative to now say it never happened. That's just their game. But if you were to just do basic arithmetic, you will see that Professor Gates is lying. Just like then and the aborigine wannabes, they are just lying. So going further, you see where it says English adventurers who had first found their way out in Portuguese ships to investigate the spice trade soon determined to take up the traffic in Negro laborers for the plantations in America as being more profitable. Sir John Hawkins, one of the famous seamen of the Elizabethan era in 1562 took over to the West Indies the first cargo of slaves transported under the British flag, but Sir John Hawkins, who afterwards adopted a demi moor in his proper color, bound with a cord as his crest, only made, I believe, one direct voyage to the coast of Guinea on his own account and usually shipped his slaves to the Canary Islands, acting thus as a transport agent for the Spaniards. And you can at least notice that it says the voyage was to the coast of Guinea. Remember at that time they did not call it African. African was to deceive everybody. That's why you see that so-called African Americans bear that name and that prevents them from having any idea of where they could be from. You see some of them claiming to be from South Africa when the slave trade never got to South Africa, never got to places like Zimbabwe even. So you see how the slave masters games work until you begin to look at these old records you will not understand where he's going and he's going to continue to have his way unfortunately but then going further down you see where he says about england england had not been engaged largely in the slave trade until she commenced to possess jamaica and other west indian islands and to develop the tobacco plantations of virginia then she almost outdid rival nations. Now, if you see the likes of the Nkalawe and other aboriginal wannabes, you can easily see who their sponsors are because they have to find a way to now make it look like they didn't commit the crimes they committed because of the Negroes' short memory for sorrows. So you can see where they are heading to. But you see what it says further down. It says, the late Dr. Robert Brown, in his interesting work, the story of Africa computes that in a little more than a century, from 1680 to 1786, 2.13 million Negro slaves were imported into the English American colonies, Jamaica in the course of 80 years absorbing 610,000. So you see what Professor Gates is telling you today that 388,000 were imported. So now you see that he is lying, but the slave master is hiding behind him. If you don't understand how this works, all you need to do is ask Professor Gates. So where did you get your figures? 
you will see that he will start stuttering or running around because that's how they behave. They all behave alike. The foot soldiers, they behave alike. They know they are lying, but they keep lying anyway. Let us also reference the dual mandate in British Tropical Africa by the Right Honorable Sir F. D. Lugard, and this was published 1922. There again, we see something of interest about the slave hunters of old, and he tells us that the Fulani of northern Nigeria are, as I have said, more capable of rule than the indigenous races, but in proportion as we consider them an alien race, we are denying self-government to the people over whom they rule and supporting an alien caste, albeit closer and more akin to the native races than a European can be. So we want you to ask yourself, why did he say they are closer to the native races than an European can be? That's because you will be deceived to think that they are the same people. That's all. So you see how they are massacring people. The slave master pretends not to see. But you see, he also put a caveat, which the British is not following. Instead, the British helps them to cover their tracks when they kill people because he provides the weapons too. The United States ships the weapon to the Middle East. The Arabs, the Arabs now provide it to them and they use it to massacre innocent people and come and tell us that they, they brought you salvation or civilization. So if you read, you will understand what we're saying. So it goes further to say, yet capable as they are, that's the caveat, it requires the ceaseless vigilance of the British staff to maintain a high standard of administrative integrity and to prevent oppression of the peasantry. We are dealing with the same generation and in many cases with the identical rulers who were responsible for the misrule and tyranny which we found in 1902. Now you need to understand that there is no place the Fulanik will rule that there won't be tyranny. It's impossible. We suspect deeply that they will be the Moors. They just renamed them to Fulani because their name does not go far behind enough. We didn't find it in very remote records anyway, but that's a different story. But then going forward, it says, the subject races near the capital were then serfs, that's slaves, and the victims of constant extortion. If you check the Fulani today, they have introduced GZ attacks. They have introduced all kinds of tax. One of their games is to impoverish the people. They make you so poor and hungry so that whatever they say will make it easy for you to sell your birthright for a portion of two. That's their game. It doesn't change. That's where the slave master works hard to make sure he puts them there. For those who think Obama was anything good for the Negroes, he was the worst thing that happened to the Negro races. Believe it or not. So it goes further to say that those dwelling at the distance were raided for slaves, that's the same group he's talking about, and could not count their women, their cattle, or their crops their own. Punishments were most barbarous and included impalement, mutilation, and burying alive. So you see who the Fulanis are. They are very barbarous. There is no better way to say it. If you doubt us, watch what they are doing. You see the Fulani in Kaduna how he is massacring the people that the slave master will protect them he knows that's who they are and unfortunately the negroes cannot come together if you talk they, they will, the same people will say no why single them out the people were killed the other place too it's the same group there is no better way to say it that's the same thing they did during the slave trade and if you doubt what we're saying prove it wrong at least they are doing it today. Let us also reference Journal of an Expedition up the Niger and Sada rivers undertaken by MacGregor Laird, Esquire, in connection with the British government in 1854 by the Reverend Samuel Crowder, and it was published 1855. And there we are shown that, that these people were interested in trade, but you see how the slave master used the Fulanese to establish his own business. Just follow the context very well and he says he was reminded that captain trother had promised that traders would be sent to deal with him dr hutchinson was then introduced as a merchant who was come to trade with him upon this he ordered his attendants to give shots of approbation and expressed his great joy at the news now remember foreign investors is the same lie used by the fulani till tomorrow morning to deceive the illiterate north the northerners that's the same thing they told them you've been hearing it for decades if they come into power they will tell you they are going to bring foreign investors which we know is a lie 
because they have no understanding of how business works the slave master knows this that's why you can't know anything you say this is what the fulanese manufacture or this is their business they will use their cattle to destroy your farm that's their stock in trade it doesn't change and that's what they used to use to come and survey or spy out where they want to come and raid for slaves during the slave trade which you can investigate further yourself but then see how smart the slave master can be and he went further to say he said the place which captain trother had selected for a trading establishment at the confluence was not a suitable one being too much out of the way and liable to be disturbed by the philatas that's the fulanese and that he would rather advise the merchants to establish themselves at Eda or at Ikiri Market, which is so near that when a stranger was living there, he would be able to send a messenger every morning to ask about his health, which he could not do if he lived at the confluence. Now remember they wanted to establish a business outpost somewhere around where you call Lokoja in Nigeria today. But this man was telling them that it was too close to where the Fulanese can access but they should rather do it closer to where he was living. It's a different story altogether, but our interest is to show you how the slave master hides behind the Fulani. Everything they are doing there, the slave master controls them, and he knows who they are. That's how he uses them. If you look at Kaduna, for example, where the Fulani is ruling as governor, you see the killings going on there. That's just who they are. The state can never make any useful progress that you can think about. It doesn't matter what we say. You just need to research it yourself follow things closely so you understand what we're saying remember it was the same governor the same person that made this tweet if we were all the same he would have been concerned about anyone dying at all and not his fulani brothers only and then he goes further to say i admitted the truth of what he said but told him to consider that white men are very sensible and always take right steps to accomplish their objects you see how they separate themselves from their foot soldiers their foot soldiers lack anything called humanity and common sense if you still doubt us go to nigeria visit any prison you like and try to see what the place looks like first then you will understand remember the prison system came with the slave trade just like the judicial system which we shall look at in a subsequent video but our interest is to show you how the slave master separates himself from his foot soldiers while at the same time uses or rides on their back to get what he wants. So he goes further to say, I asked if any person were to be troubled with balls on his foot, whether it will alleviate the pain to apply salve to his head. He replied, no. I said, well, in order to prevent future disturbance by the philatas, that's the Fulanese, the queen has sent some gentlemen to go by land from the north to Sokoto, Bonu and Hausa countries to make treaties of peace and commerce with those nations and to tell them that not only they but all the countries on the banks of the Niger and Shada such as Igbo, Egara and Nufi are their friends and that they should not be disturbed. So you see how the slave master came to negotiate his trade deal, but on the back of promising them that the Fulanese will no longer disturb them. The Fulanese were just slave hunters. So the reason the story is told differently is because the slave master is still using them till tomorrow morning. So if you are living in, let's say in Europe, in England or somewhere, packing shit as they call it, or doing some manual jobs, you should be understand that somebody is behind why your own place is in turmoil so that you can come and be a slave in his own place from the same book you see where it says here we began to meet recent traces of the philata depredations philata is fulani the inhabitants of oba on french wood cliff were obliged to take refuge on harriet island on account of the philatas that's the fulanese fearing less after the capture of panda they might attack them also remember no negro nation had a standing army the negroes are spiritual beings and we shall show you this in a different video so you understand the difference between the slave master as a physical being and the negroes as spiritual 
all that happened and destroyed the Negroes was when they abandoned their spiritual way of life and faced or joined the slave master in the physical side. We give you a little example. There was nothing like armed robbers. There was nothing like high walls and gates, physical. They just had something akin to the same thing you see in the Passover, where they said you touch the blood and the angel of death passes over you. They had something similar. They had things they will place somewhere and no thief were near there. If you notice today, the full and headsmen are killing and murdering them because they don't understand what they have. They would rather go buy a gun instead of going to their priests, some of them that still remember what it used to be to stop them. They would rather go buy a gun from the slave master, which is how the slave master makes his money. Hence, he brought his golden calf. But that's the subject of a different video. But we'll see what it tells us further down here. And it says, started about 8 a.m. and arrived at Yimaha on the right side about noon, where we dropped anchor to get wood. Here again, the inhabitants have been obliged to quit their town and to take refuge on the opposite island where they have built temporary sheds to escape the depredations of the Fulanese or Felatas, who not content with the destruction of Panda and molestation of Toto, covet the poor and defenseless inhabitants of Oba and Yimaha in their avarice. So, our interest is to ask you, why do you think nobody teaches you this in school? The same thing they are doing today, the same way they go massacre communities, and then the news will report it as bandits. Who are bandits? How come the army, the same army that you spend billions and budget billions on, cannot stop the bandits, but they can invade in the colonel's house that is carrying no gun? Those are questions you have to ask. Because if you keep running with the full army, the good thing about them is, they know nobody. As far as you are not Fulani and you are a Negro, it will be your turn one day. So if you continue defending them, you are just working with the slave master. Of course, it is the slave master that is hiding behind them, giving them the weapons, doing the propaganda, giving them the ideas because he knows who they are. He knows the records they have with him. But you don't know this unless you go back and study these materials yourself. That will help you know what they are coming to do to you. If you are in doubt what their conquest looks like, look at the house ads. We saw this little write-up online. Our interest is to show you what it looks like till today for the house ads. And it says, till date, the Fulani may take the sons of Hausa, castrate him and use him as domestic guard over his harems. No Nigerian press has ever prayed into this. So that's how it is. So by the time they conquer you in the southeast or south south that is running after them, they can take your children, castrate them and use them in their harems. That's why you see the slave master hiding behind them and using them because he knows who they are. If you doubt what we're saying, why not just go to the north and ask around? That will tell you. At least they say, if you want to know what your wife we look like when she gets old you just need to look at her biological mother if you want to know what Fulani conquest looks like look at the houses you will see who they are you see how much they have suffered you see the IDP comes if you give any sensible person power in Nigeria it will take less than six months to resettle everyone that is displaced but these people will never do it because they don't want to do it that's how they will turn everybody inside out and upside down whatever be the case we encourage you to find time to conduct your own research it will at least help you to understand what is happening to understand the future to be able to predict the future to know who the slave masters are to understand why the place has been in turmoil since whenever to understand why hunger is there and of course here we come to the end of this edition of Fulani the enemies within a reply part three we thank you very much for listening and we encourage you to find time to conduct your own research or at least look for the materials referenced here and study them yourself that's all you need to do remember to put your comments if you think we got anything wrong we welcome your comments we welcome your criticism we welcome your ability to debunk whatever thing you think we got wrong we are not all-knowing we are not perfect but we want you to look at what is happening there especially the so-called african-americans 
Do not allow yourself to be deceived by the slave masters and his lies. We thank you very much once again for listening. Peace.